And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino. I'm a little under the weather. I do apologize if I sound a little different, but you know I'm dragging my butt out of bed for Spider-Man. Uh, Insomniac is back at it here with their third Spider-Man game. This is Spider-Man 2. Of course, we had the mainline 2018 breakout Spider-Man and the spin-off game, Miles Morales, both of which I really enjoyed. Uh, just cards out on the table here. I wanna show my extreme bias. I really, really enjoy Spider-Man and I've played every damn Spider-Man game. The good ones, the weird ones, the broken ones. Uh, Insomniac's previous two games had it pretty much figured out uh, with some little complaints here and there. And I'd say once again, they've pretty much done it with a few minor complaints here and there. This is a different beast from the previous two games though. It feels a little less emotional and more bombastic and crazy and comic booky. And it still has some great character moments and a couple of tearjerker bits here and there, but this feels like a love letter to some late 80s, early 90s Spidey comics with big crazy action, over the top heroics, and threatening enemies. Uh, like God of War 2018 to God of War Ragnarok, it's great. Uh, it adds a ton more gameplay and more cool stuff, but I think the initial shock value of the story and presentation of the first game still feels a bit stronger. But still, overall, this thing is absolutely incredible. So let's get into it. Just so you know, we've been playing a review copy provided by Sony, and this footage was captured on PlayStation 5, swapping between the graphical modes. And this footage is as spoiler-free as I could possibly make it. But be warned, there are some cool surprises like right from the beginning of this game. And I think other video reviews are gonna show off a lot more than me. I want you to be surprised with some of this because it made me, as a fan, really happy to discover it myself. So that's that's just a warning. Anyways, Spider-Man 2 takes place a few months after the events of Miles Morales. So the two Spider-Men are in full uh, swing <laughs> together. You know, they're doing their hero thing. They're fully formed and they're in a good groove until Kraven, Harry Osborn, and Venom come to town. And that's really the back of the box or like the first trailer description stuff, no spoilers. But I'll get into how effective all that story stuff is in a little bit. Now, gameplay wise, the loop is pretty similar. You're in the city, progressing through the adventure, and uh, those main story missions are broken up by the game asking you to go out into the world and do open world stuff. Love it or hate it, you know, your character will say after a mission, hmm, I should really check in on crime before I go do the next thing, you know? And that's when you go out and do all the other stuff. There are hidden collectibles to find, enemy bases to take down, a lot of the standard stuff you've already seen. If you love Spider-Man, it's good solid Spider-Man busy work. Uh, thankfully, a lot of it is a lot more streamlined and shaken up a bit to feel a little bit less repetitive. Like stopping car chases is less of a big thing you go and do, and then it's one of the same two car stopping animations in the minigame over and over and over again. Now here, it, it's just something that usually pops up really close to you while you're swinging, and you just swing on over and do a quick heroic, and it can be over and done with in a few seconds. It's it's like these small quality of life changes that make a difference. I also found a lot of the collectibles more interesting this time around. There are quite a few, and a lot of them have like sub-story ramifications that are pretty fun actually, and, and pretty interesting to help them feel a little bit less like busy work and more like something you genuinely want to do and get something out of it, you know, for this adventure. Now, aside from the usual busy stuff, there are good, compelling side missions this time around as well, like actual story stuff. And some might surprise you. They're often lighthearted and sweet and simple, but they're much stronger diversions than just like, you know, clear another bad guy camp especially uh, a few that have their own somewhat self-contained stories with some familiar faces and a couple of surprises. Now, enemy factions, like in previous games, are, are kind of what a lot of the side objectives and stuff to do kind of revolve around. The enemy factions aren't too various. There are like sort of two main ones and two side ones, one of which can be super stressful in a good way. Uh, that's all I'll say. I'll definitely say could have used one more solid full enemy faction to keep things interesting, but at the very least, the main enemy faction in the game does have a lot of different enemy varieties. Now, as for the main missions, I, I know it took a while to get to this, sorry. Uh, they're great. 
good Spider-Man adventuring, slower moments with characters and puzzles, and some solid boss battles and big set piece spectacle moments you'd expect. Some boss battles had a surprising amount of challenge to them. I found myself getting brutalized a few times, more than I expected as these games are typically fairly easy breezy. But there is some absolutely awesome shit that goes down on screen. You know, not to sound like too much of a hype man, but there were some moments with stuff happening on screen where my mouth was just open in disbelief, especially some of the Venom stuff. That's all like, holy shit, you're not ready. And gameplay wise, combat still feels similar, but the biggest additions are the power abilities from Miles Morales on one trigger hold with face buttons mapped uh, and the other side for on the fly use of Spidey gadgets you're able to use powers to great effect, whether you're Peter or Miles. You know, zipping enemies up in the air, stun locking them, an AOE attack, stuff like that. And Peter's are dependent on his spider arm tech or symbiote powers. And with the symbiote, there's also a kind of rage meter you can temporarily activate. For Miles, uh, he gets like a big cinematic electric blast wave that clears the map. The other big thing is uh, the parry. Enemies will flash a certain color for these big attacks. These attacks can be deflected right back at enemies and it works well enough. I don't know how much a Spider-Man game needed a parry, but it changes up the feel a bit here and there, especially with certain enemy types. And in higher difficulty levels, like the unlockable difficulty called Ultimate, it becomes much more necessary. Now, speaking of unlockables, the skill trees are solid this time around. Uh, where other things are streamlined, the process of unlocking and upgrading is a bit more in depth. Peter and Miles get their own separate skill trees to work through, uh, both with their own branches into different avenues for their respective abilities. So I do wish the characters felt a little bit more separate and distinct other than Peter having the symbiote. At the end of the day, you're still just comboing dudes in the air and doing the little triangle circle finishers like you always have, but it holds up. The added suit abilities do help keep things fresh. There's also a suit tech tree for the characters that you can dump open world exploration stuff into health upgrades, damage upgrades, stuff like that. Also, while Peter and Miles have their own trees I mentioned earlier, they each have a collective shared tree too. The main thing you get out of this tree are some new traversal abilities and upgrades. Web swinging, you know, my personal favorite way of getting around in a video game ever, is not massively upgraded from the last game, but it does have some fun little additions for the dedicated web swingers. First of all, the animations this time around are absolutely incredible. The characters just look like they're having so much more fun and they're so much more lively and expressive as they swing around. Also, you can get your momentum up and move through the city faster than in the previous games. This game wants you getting around the city quick. It loads it all in really fast and they're clearly very proud of that. Now, one of my favorite ways to get yourself moving through the city quick uh, is the big loop that you can do. Now, if you do it right, you can fling yourself really far. It feels a little awkward sometimes with how the camera pans out and I don't know if it makes sense physics wise, but I don't care, it's cool. You can also do a slingshot yank and release wherever you are to really get going fast. And you can also do like a hard right turn or, or, or left turn swing where the character will yank themselves 90 degrees to like turn a corner. You can actually hold that button longer and if you can get near say like a flagpole, you can just swing around it horizontally. Now it's a little awkward because the character can just do it forever, but again, it's cool when you use it for certain situations and these are just good new tricks to get around. Again, they didn't overhaul the web swing, but there's just a bit more to it. And then there's also the wingsuit, the, you know, the, the web wings to get you around even faster. Fast travel is available to be unlocked by spending time in each district, and it's really fast and impressive visually, but the, the web wings are kind of like the in-game fast travel. It, it's great in short bursts just to bust them out and glide quickly where your webs can't attach. Like if you're too high, it's nice in a pinch but you can also glide into these wind tunnels in the city that shoot you through town at a higher rate of speed. And it kind of just feels like you're Superman, not really Spider-Man. It's a nice way to streamline, again, traveling around the city, getting through things quick, especially getting across bodies of water really quick. But I still prefer to just swing the old fashioned way because I'm an annoying little web swinging fanboy. <laughs> That's just me though. But the city itself, it's bigger, but it's still manageable. Even the parts that aren't new feel significantly different. I don't know, more traffic, 
more detail, seems like more unique looking buildings, and more time of day settings and weather effects and just a brighter overall color palette make a hell of a difference. The new area additions are some of Brooklyn and Queens, and they feel distinct. As someone from the greater New York area, I'd argue that they're less accurate than Insomniac's Manhattan, but it gets some of the feel right, just in like a small kind of quaint and charming way. Like Queens in real life is a monster, but it's hard to encapsulate that in a really small little game world. Still, I'm just glad it's there and it's nice that there are tons of bridges to swing around and really just more to explore. The city just feels so much bigger like when you're perched on a building overlooking an entire highway like the BQE just like filled with cars and traffic. And again, with the bridges, with the river, it feels way more like a fully fleshed out New York now. And technically wise, it all performs great. Loading, fast traveling, everything is super fast and detailed. It has a performance and fidelity mode as well as a 40 mode if you have a 120 hertz TV, which is nice. And uh, none of the modes really show significant compromises to my naked eye other than frame rate. I had two crashes in like over 30 hours of playing. That was really my only complaint. Now, the only other thing I think might be a negative for some people are the Mary Jane sections. They were criticized in the last game for kind of killing the pacing, but I didn't mind them personally. Now, in Spider-Man 2, they bring back Mary Jane sections, and this time they feel far less creative. While some people would argue in the previous game they would kill the pace, I still found like what I was doing in the story as Mary Jane was interesting. Here, it's her just thrown into a few generic sections. One moment is a standout, but the rest of the sequences had me just going, oh man, this again, come on. It's not a huge part of the game, but it was a negative that I could find. Uh, and that being said, I personally really liked what they did with Mary Jane's story and character arc. There's some good stuff there. And that really goes for everyone, really. There's one element from the previous games I wish was followed up on a bit more, but otherwise, I thought they did a really good job weaving Miles into a Spider-Man story involving these classic villains and shaking things up quite a bit, while also keeping the relationship between Miles and Peter interesting, uh, especially in some pretty nuanced ways. So really what I'm trying to get across is that while the original Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2018, uh, left me emotional by the end of the game, the end of Spider-Man 2 just had me going, hell yeah, dude. The action in this thing is crazy, the spectacle is nuts, and again, I don't wanna sound like I'm overly gushing or anything, but I just really like Spider-Man, and if you're coming to this and you already know how I approach these things and you know I'm a Spider-Man fan, I can at least tell you that I am very happy from that standpoint. But of course, that's a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I'll give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinions. And now we wanna hear yours down in the comments. Granted, it's still a few days before the game releases, but we'd love to hear what you're expecting. Maybe like the first thing you're gonna do when you get out into the open world, maybe experiment with some of those web swinging powers. Let's talk about anything Spider-Man 2 down in the comments. We'll be talking a lot more about Spider-Man 2 in other videos, and I'll be talking about it more on my channel as well. So keep your eyes peeled for all that. But if this video helped you out at all, you like seeing gameplay, getting some insight, clicking the like button helps us. Thank you. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.